So this place is pretty cool, right? This is called the Isle of Palms, South Carolina. This is where I'm fishing at today. Now, this is not gonna be your usual setting of me fishing. You see me do a lot of bass videos and predominantly all my content is based around freshwater fishing. Well, today we're gonna do some saltwater fishing. I know, I know you don't come to my channel to see saltwater fishing, but I promise you, you won't disappoint. So just hang around, just hang around a little bit you guys that want something a little different maybe you're a little tired of always going through the same routine of bass fishing all the time all the time same scene same scene i promise you if you try salt water it will refresh and it will rekindle your love for fishing because that's what it does for me <clears throat> not only that you've probably been sold the idea that you need special equipment to salt water fish with i'm going to show you that you don't all you freshwater guys out there you don't need anything. Everything that I got that I'm gonna to use today, I got off of shopcarls.com. It's just bass fishing tackle, that's all it is. I'm gonna show you, you can catch redfish on chatter baits, swim baits, uh, soft plastics, Ned rig, jerk baits, crank baits, all the same stuff that you use when you're bass fishing, you can catch them in the salt water. Redfish love them, speckled trout love them, flounder love them. I'm gonna show you right here how you can catch fish on those same baits that you guys are getting in all your mystery tackle boxes and all that cool tackle that you always see me fish with in the freshwater. So let's get out here. This place is cool. I think you're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. We're gonna catch a lot of fish today. Before we get started today, the bait that I'm actually going to be using in today's video come from my mystery tackle box. Let's we'll look in this box and see what we got today. So here we go, a couple crankbaits. I'm sure we could get out there around some of the oyster bars. Use a crankbait around the oyster bars. Dude, that little guy right there is pretty amazing. Look at the pink belly on him and the green back. It looks like a little shrimp. There's no doubt we probably could catch some on this. The one that I'm most excited about that I've had a lot of experience with with red fishing is probably the, the good old school chatterbait. I'm gonna take this little guy, put, uh, put a little soft plastic behind him, and we can skip it around docks. You can fish it just about anywhere, in the grass, any oyster bars, anywhere. Fish just like a chatterbait. I don't know, it's just one of those baits that really just seems to always work. More crankbaits. So lots of hard baits in this mystery tackle box. And I'm sure there's something in here that we can use to catch a, catch a couple redfish today, a couple bunch of trout with, and catch some dinner. You like to catch dinner? Some orders where you come to get dinner at. So all that stuff's in this much box. Make sure you check out the description box. You can get $5 off your first, your first subscription to mystery tackle box. New subscribers only. Don't try to cheat the system. chatterbait that time look at there green pumpkin chatterbait in his face don't tell me that you can't catch saltwater species on bass tackle that's bass tackle it's my same rod and reel that i use for bass tackle everything the redfish dude look at it. aren't they beautiful see how blue his tail is and everything this is just an original just an original chatterbait right here I don't think uh, Scruffy up on the bank is not too happy about me catching this fish. This is an original chatterbait, green pumpkin, purple demon trailer right there. Simple bass setup. There's nothing special about that guy at all. So the thing that you're going to notice, you're probably going to be blown away by <clears throat> today, is a lot of the structure that we're going to be fishing is totally the exact identical 2AT, same thing that you would see me fishing when I'm bass fishing. We're gonna be fishing a lot of creek mouths, a lot of docks, a lot of the same stuff that is structured that we'd be fishing if we're fishing for bass in the fresh water. That was a 
big one. That's a big one. That's a big one. That's a big one. That's a big one. That's a big one. He's going through those rocks. That's a big one. Oh my God, where's he going? Come back, baby. Come back. Don't go in that dock. Don't go in that dock. Do not go in the dock. Don't go in that dock. Don't go in that dock. That's a big red. That is a big red. I haven't seen it yet. Don't go in the dock, baby. Where's he going? It's a big red. It's a big red. <coughs> That's a big red. Yeah, where's he going? Guys, there's gonna get some bigger head. Oh, there he is. There he is. I got him. It's beautiful, beautiful redfish that I just caught right here on bass tackle. That was actually a light line. That was seven pound test. And I was using, let me show you, I'm gonna get this guy back in the water. I'm gonna show you the exact bait that I was using. I stepped it up to a little bit bigger bait this time. I was using a, a diesel minnows, which is a four inch bait. And went to a little bit darker color. And this little dead end canal right here. And this guy just got it right off the rock. So let's get this guy back in the water. They're so beautiful. All right, let's release this guy. Whew. What a beautiful fish. Dude, this stuff is so much fun fishing for salt order fish on bass tackle. They bite the same baits. I'm, you can see I'm in here in the dead end canal, just like I would be bass fishing. There's docks, and all I'm doing is just pitching that little minnows up around the docks. You can see there's some rip wrap in here. That fish just got that bait right off the rocks. They're so aggressive. It's just like bass fishing, but these things are a lot more aggressive, a lot bigger, a lot faster. They're a lot stronger. To give you a workout all right so let me show you guys the tackle that i'm using right here this is just my regular seven foot even seven foot one six stick and what i'm using right here this is called a texas eye jig head this is one that z-man makes it has a little breakaway here but you can also rig it weedless and it's got a little keeper right here so it keeps that plastic up there real nice and easy you don't have to worry about it slipping down when you make casts or if you get hung up in the oysters and i'm taking just a uh, z-man diesel minnows which is a four inch swim bait and rigging that guy up on there texas rigging him and just casting it around what i love about it is that it stays out of the weeds really really well and you can rig so something i do a little different i really like the hook pocket in the in this swim bait you see it's got a little hook pocket so i actually rig it upside down because what i do is just push the hook all the way through the plastic and because of that little hook pocket on the bottom it protects it and keeps it weedless but as soon as the fish bites it the the hook point pops right out so i actually rig a guy upside down just like that you don't have to do that it's not necessarily something you have to do and it doesn't change the action of the bait it works just as well but you have the tail popping you know up swims really good falls just the same way but that is just an easier way to keep your bait weedless that's a big one gotta get him out of this i gotta get him out of the dock oh i don't think i'm gonna get him out of the dock dude i don't think i'm gonna get that one out of the dock oh can i get him out of the dock dude they just will not quit i've only got seven bout test line on here I can't get him out. Those barnacles are gonna cut my line. If I can just get him to come a little farther. Mm, my odds are not really looking really good right now. <laughs> odds are not really looking really good right now. Oh, come on fish, come on fish, come on fish. Don't go, don't go, come back this way. Come back this way. Come back this way. Oh God. I can't believe it's lasted this long, honestly. Those barnacles are like a thousand little knives around those those dock pilings. As soon as I flipped it up in there, he got it. I think I'm gonna be able 
if I can just get him to wear out and I can get control of the fish, I'll be okay. Come on out. Come on out. Come on out, fish. Oh, you just, it's part of dealing with this kind of fishing. They just get back in there. The smarter thing to do would be to put some bigger line. As soon as I get this one on, we're going with a little bit bigger line for sure. If I can get this one in, I don't know if I can. It's highly unlikely. He is not tiring out at all. Yeah. It's like he's, he's getting stronger the more I fight him. I don't think he's that big, but these fish are just so strong. That's the fun part about fishing for these inshore saltwater fish. They're so strong, they're so fun. I don't think I'm going to be able to get that one. Oh, come on. If I to Now I'm to the point where I just want to see what it is. I can see it down there boiling. I can see. Oh, yeah. This is not looking good. Oh, there he is. There he is. There he is. Oh, it broke. It finally broke. I finally broke the line. He got me tied around in these barnacles around the, around all the dock pollens and everything and the line finally broke. I think we need to learn a lesson on that one. Definitely need to switch to a little bit bigger line because we just got manhandled by redfish in the dock pollens. So the temperature's starting to warm up. The fish are starting to get a little active. I'm gonna take, uh, first thing I'm gonna do is get this heavy hoodie off. We're gonna find some bigger tackle so we can catch some of these redfish. All right guys, so, this is what we're gonna switch to. I'm gonna go into my line box here. This is where I keep my line in these little Plano speed bags. You know, all my little spools of line that I, that I carry on my boat, this is what I keep them in here. They keep my line nice and organized. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna upgrade our line size to 20 pound test braid. And then I'm gonna tie that to a 20 pound test um, fluorocarbon leader. And that way I'll be able to kind of muscle on these fish and pull them back, you know, kind of get them Get them coming my way. That's what I need to do is get them, get them coming my way and take advantage of the situation as fast as possible because as of right now, your boy is getting dogged out. So <clears throat> what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna tie, just like a little bit of backing material. There's, there's a little bit of line already on this reel, but not quite enough. I'm just gonna fill it up with some more braid. I'm gonna go 20 pound test braid. I'm just tying a Albright knot, Albright knot to uh, join the two lines together. <clears throat> and then what I'm gonna do is fill this reel up. This is a 3000 series reel. I'm gonna finish this, uh, I'm gonna fill this spool up with a little bit more braid. All right, now we got a little bit bigger equipment on. Getting behind these docks and I can be a little bit more forceful with them now. Be my luck now, we'll catch all all small ones now that i've got the right equipment hopefully we'll find a couple more of those bigger redfish it doesn't take that big of one to, to kind of take advantage of you is the deal a 20 inch redfish can give you a lot of trouble see right now i'm getting way <clears throat> getting way in behind these docks with this little paddle tail swim bait. And these redfish, especially on low tide, they like that shade. There's not really much cover for them to hide in, so they'll get the first little piece of vertical structure in the water. It's always a good bet there's a fish on it. There he is, there he is, there he is. I need to be a little forceful with him now. There he is. There he is. That's a big one. That's a big one. That's a big one. That's a big one. No, oh, you can't get in that pile now, buddy. I got you. I got you. Come back here. That's a big one. Whoa, look at that thing. Look at that thing, bro. That's a big one. That is a big one. Bro. It's so much like bass fishing. Look at that thing. Holy smokes. Look at that redfish, y'all. Holy smokes, look at that thing. Oh my God. 
Jeez, look at that. I gotta get back to the back to land this guy. Oh, look at the size of that one. Look at the size of that one. Look at the size of that one. Oh, let me get my hands on you, dude. Let me get my hands on you. Let me get my hands on you. I got my hands on him. Oh, let me get my hands on him. Oh, I got him. Got him. Got him. Got him. Got him. Got him. <laughs> Look at this. This is what it's all about, dude. Look at that. <clears throat> that little minnows. A little three inch minnows stuck right in his face. Oh, dude, that's so awesome. Look at this beautiful fish. <laughs> I just caught this thing in just a dead end canal right here on a swim bait, flipping it back behind the pilings, just like you would for bass fishing. Look at it, ate that minnows. Just a, just a jig head plastic on a, uh, you know, just a jig head paddle tail, boot tail swim bait. I've been switching back and forth from three inch to four inch. Look at that freak, dude. <laughs> oh my God. These things are so awesome. I switched up to a little bit bigger tackle. That way I can muscle those fish out of the, out behind the docks. Cause when they get, get you back in behind the docks, dude, they really take advantage with you. But yeah, dude, once you upsize the tackle and you can be a little bit more forceful, you get some big ones like that. <laughs> oh, dude, that is so awesome. Oh my God, how awesome is this? How awesome is it? It's like catching bass, but they're on steroids. Catch them with the same stuff, same tackle, same way, same techniques. Just a lot bigger, a lot uglier, and a lot nastier. <laughs>